Hey, kitty girls, guess what? We're back. It's Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time Season 16, Episode Number One. And we know you love us. That's why you came. You want yeah. to see our lovely faces or listen to us on the interwebs. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is a little sideshow that we do here at Cubs Out Loud, Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. My name's Gary, and with me is the ever fabulous. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Yes. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome to the wonder. It Welcome to the fun. Sunday, January 7th, 2024, and this is our first episode of the season 16 uh, discussion. And yes. uh, surprisingly, MTV was like, you get one episode. No, no, no. That's it. Just one. That's all you get. No, no. That wasn't a question. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone thought it was going to be a, like a double premiere episode, and that was not the case. Uh, Shadow well, Spachy, they... who was like, uh, I thought we would have had a double premiere. He was like, yep, so did we. I mean, it would have made sense, but, you know, whatever. I guess they they, 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 wanted, time, they wanted time to show Mean Girls for the thousandth time. So if you do not watch live, you don't understand that part. Uh, but literally... You saw the episode, you saw the Untucked, mm -hmm. and then they showed Mean Girls. Well, that says to me that was all about the coy. That's about advertising. That, that that's just like give us give us the money. Two episodes, we'll spread it out over time. We'll make it even longer. Mm -hmm. coin, give us more coin. Anyway, so that being said, uh, yeah, we're gonna get into this and discuss what our thoughts were on this very first episode. Um, and we probably have some very interesting perspectives. Uh, Damon and I have been doing this gig for quite some time now. I can't remember how many seasons it's been. This is our 155th I, episode, though. I know that much. Oh, I think we've been doing this since season eight. So we're on eight seasons, if I'm not, at least eight seasons of the main show, and then I think several on tax. If, I, if I'm remembering correctly, just don't, don't, don't quote me on that, y'all. Don't quote me on that shit, because... <laughs> I'm I'm getting a little older and memory ain't the greatest. Aww. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> but I feel like we started with season eight, but I could be wrong, I'm and I am. That, <laughs> <not good. laughs> that's where I was about to go to. Because I was like, like we got this lovely sense. little spreadsheet I put together to document all this stuff, and we started in 2015, season seven. Oh, it was seven. Look at you trying to make us younger. <laughs> we just started in season eight. <laughs> It was a whole year off. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, six seasons had existed beforehand um, and the original All-Star. So we missed seven seasons, um, but we didn't technically miss it. We just knew that we'd like to watch the show back then, and we were like, hey, why don't we just talk about it? Um, so that being said, we're going to jump into our first segment, um, and we'll explain this as we go for those of you that are kind of new and the fact that it's a new season. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. Right. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right. So put the pedal to the metal, baby. This is where, uh, Damon, you and I give our thoughts about three basic categories we divide them in. So we've got serves, swerves, and nerves. So serves are the positive, like things that we want to bring some highlight to that we thought were done pretty well. Swerves. Yes, mama. <laughs> <laughs> no mama <laughs> like <laughs> and the swerves are no mama <laughs> right the swerves the swerves are uh you should have avoided that <laughs> and not done so and then um the nerve is my favorite category because it could be nerve yes mama like to the house down boots uh finger wave snaps and a clap for the body like that or it could be what the fuck you think you're doing like <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is up with that um yeah yeah it's it's either this what the fuck you doing here or mama this is garbage <laughs> one of those so with that being said uh let's get into serves david what did you think was a serve from this first episode so um i'm gonna probably talk about this clean a lot this episode but um i'm gonna give some serves to q's entrance look um, we find out in, you know, over the course of the episode, I, I mean, she talks about it, probably talks about it maybe a little too much, but, um, she makes all of her stuff. So top to bottom, her, I'm assuming top to bottom, at least clothing wise, 
Um, everything that she did was handmade. So looking at that outfit, while there wasn't a whole lot there, there was a whole lot of work there, and you can tell. Um, I was talking um, when Jim and I were watching um, Pit Stop. Um, I was talking about this with him, and I'm like, you can see, like, that's a, there's a lot of effort that was put into this. It was a very cohesive look. It was something that was thought about and presented in a way that made this very, you know, fun looking. It's a wonderful look. Um, I love the attention to detail because the shoes match the, like, corset and the sort of harder pieces of the, like, um, shoulder stuff. And a lot of the other things um, match sort of the greens and of the other things, which I thought was really good. I love that look. Um, and it was a great statement. She came in first, and it was a wonderful statement. I do kind of wish that they had maybe had her come in, like, second, um, just so that you could get someone being like, wow, that's a really good look. Like, I, I, I feel like it owed, it was owed that amount of, um, you know, praise, as it were. So, so that's why I'm giving it here. Like, there's a lot of work, and we see more stuff of hers later on, but I was very much impressed by that look. I, I agree. She, she made a really great um, entrance look, to borrow and uh, kind of modify a phrase. I think it was clean, consistent, and concise. Mm-hmm. Like, really well put together, very impressive. Like, I was very proud to see that come in as the first look, and then to find out that she made it, I was like, okay. Queen, 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 crafty. She got skills. Like she knows. Uh -huh. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And what about you? Um, Michelle's feedback. Ooh. I honestly thought that Visage's feedback was truly, honestly, like, um, con constructive criticism. Like, I don't think mm. she was being really bitchy or bitey, which I know is something that people have complained about in the past. Uh -huh. I also noticed, a sort of uh, related but slightly sidebar. She was listed as a senior producer on the episode. Oh. So I wonder if in the world of Wonder Realm, like with this season, she's kind of elevated up a position because now she's a permanent judge, has been for several seasons next to uh -huh. Mother but she's the only one outside of her, like everybody else alternates. Yeah. So I wonder if like she kind of, you know, moved up a level as far as like credit and recognition, and she may have changed slightly her way of handling things. And maybe she's taken in, you know, over the past couple seasons, the criticism that she's harsh on the girls. Uh. And she's never said that she blames it on the edit. Uh -huh. Because she knows better than to do that. <laughs> but at the same time, I think she feels like there's a lot you don't see that I say. Uh. And I think a lot of the queens are universally for the past handful of years, two, three, four years, said they appreciate Michelle's like comments. They don't really right. think that she's being a bitch. Right. Except for Rhonda. Are you sure? <laughs> but that's because the two of them know each other. Rhonda talked about this recently on a podcast and it cracked me up to no end and she was like, the thing is, she's like, I painted her face for her book cover. Like, I did this. She's like, we are good friends. She's like, so the right. fact that she like commented and said things the way she did, she was like, I wasn't having it. I was like, ooh, girl. Anyway. So uh -huh. I just wanted to give uh, props for the fact that I felt like I paid attention. I was like, oh, Michelle, at least in this edit, she doesn't look like she's coming for anybody. She was, you know, <laughs> trying to, to give them some very specific things. And this is probably more natural for the beginning of the season. Yeah. Because these are all brand new queens. She theoretically hasn't seen them before. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. All right. Next up, Swerves. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, okay. Interesting. Go ahead. I'm looking at the document. I see what you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Morphine's Delusions. So, um... So Morphine Love Dion, um, this Miami, Florida queen um, with this Latina booty, blah, 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 all this stuff, great mug, yada, 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 yada. Um, I call it delusions because, yeah, there was a lot going, there was a lot of words being said mm -hmm. 
that did not match the reality of things. Okay. For example, her butt. Um, she commented on her ass a lot this episode, and she made the point to in- indicate that it was BBL. Um, so that's a, I think, I think if I'm remembering correctly, it may be body by lipo. I'm going to check really quick, or Gary's going to check really quick. Oh, I thought it was called, I thought that stood for Brazilian butt lift. Oh, maybe that is. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> BBL meaning, what is, what is that? <sighs> yep. Well, there's that one. Um, oh, yeah. So that's the thing. Okay. That makes sense then. Um, so clearly like she she got some lipo done and got this fat in the butt injected whatever or however the procedure works i don't really care um that's not natural and i'm glad that michelle kind of clocked it a little bit like yeah it's take it from one part of your body and put it in another but it's not a natural occurrence it's not something that you did um that part second one um and this is going to be harsh i'm going to need you to up your um your your um design level Mm. you talk a really good game and you give really good face your face is is painted i love your face um you're gonna need to do more than that your entrance look was 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 eh and your runway look was garbage um i will own it it was a you you did this towel thing which was cute and I and I appreciate it. You did nothing really to the towel at all. Um, and I I was I was a fan at first of the like taking it off and you kind of twirled and it came off like that's kind of cute. I thought that was fine. But underneath was a bathing suit mm-hmm. that you could you can get probably anywhere. There was nothing new, nothing fun, nothing unique, nothing that made it uniquely, you know, you are your own. Right. Um, and then at some point, in, like, I think it was when they announced the um, that no one was going home. They went to your confessional moment, and at first you're kind of like, "Woo, weight off my shoulders," and then you're like, "No, it's not a weight off my shoulder because I was fine." No, no, no. Like, be be honest with yourself. Be honest with us, girl. Like, you were scared, mm. so admit it, own that truth, because you knew you probably looked at the other six girls and you're kind of like, whoo, I, I may have missed a mark. Maybe with the exception of maybe one or two, I probably missed the mark here. So yeah. yeah. Delusion. Yeah. Convince yourself. <laughs> anyway, that being said, Gary. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I think that's fair. Mine swerve is the muse legacy. Mm. Um. Put it back in the oven. It's not ready. Drag her. I'm not yes. dragging her. I'm no, dragging. I want you to. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Fix it, bitch. <Mitch! laughs> Here's the thing, like, um, girl, like you. This is this is the thing I have to say, and I and and tsunami is the focus. Because uh-huh. she is representing it right now. But I'm going to say this to any queen out there, not that they listen to the show, who is a part of a legacy of a house. Okay. That is coming forward from a fan, from a drag family that has already been on Drag Race. Uh-huh. You don't get to avoid the lens through which you get to be viewed. Uh-huh. So wherever you come from, whosoever house or drag family you come from, it will come forward. And there is an expectation, and you are not meeting it unless you excel. Right. Like, unless you come from a Boo Boo Boots the Fool, like, previous contestant who went out as a Victoria Porkchop Parker the first time around. And I'm only saying that because she's the first queen to ever leave, because Victoria is damn near flawless. Like, here's the thing. Like, you can't, you can't come in... Because we keep seeing it again and again, and now she's she's replicating it. I'm like, why do you think that like you're all that? Because you're not. Because you're not. Just 
I'm just saying. That's right. It's fact. It's not shade, girl. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, I was really disappointed. I was like, oh, okay. Like, so- your your whole thing is your walk. Which is okay. I mean, Charlie's there, and God bless her. You know, maybe she has the best walk of the seven so far, but like, whoop de doo um, You know, I mean, just, I don't know. I just wasn't really all that thrilled. And Velvet doesn't show well on, on the stage in those lights. So, like, her, no. her outfit for her performance uh-huh. was kind of lackluster. I mean, there was just a, there was several things. Like, I was like, it, it was ill fitting, actually, in my opinion. I felt like it should have been skin tight, and it wasn't. And I was like, okay, so did you, like, starve yourself on the Tic Tac diet before you got to L.A., and that's why your outfit doesn't fit? Or did you borrow it from somebody else? So, I, I'm just saying. The like, Beast, I have, the Beast I, legacy I, is not being met, in my opinion. Not that Candy is a fashion icon of right. the sort that I expect perfection from. However. However. You I are just coming from I, New York. You have a lot of attitude. I expect you to deliver. You are not meeting my expectations. That's that. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, I told you to drag her, and you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But the I I I feel this, and. I, it, oh, how do, it's there's something to be said about coming into this show, like you said, with a legacy behind you. Mm-hmm. Something very big that needs to be that is a shoe that needs to be filled, good or bad. Um, you either need to, like you said, excel, or at least be better. Right, and. Right now, tsunami, tsunami. I'm uncertain. Like your no, I, I yeah. Let's be blunt. I was not impressed with anything that you put out there in this first episode, except for maybe your entrance look. I thought the entrance looks but nice. I thought that was nice. I think the pants were too big on you. Yeah. Um, Again, ill-fitting. Yeah. And and but the rest of it was nice. It kind of helped in a way to cover it up a little bit, a little bit. Zumani, like just keep that. But everything else was 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 not good. Um, the like you said, the outfit for the performance was just kind of basic and nothing really amazing um and i agree with the judges that your energy kind of fell flat during your 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 bitch track um and then your reveal honey um oh that right i i and this is the general and i may i may make this a comment later but no i'm not i didn't put it on there when you are given the reveal yourself and that is like the prompt that you're probably been given, like I expect to you to elevate this. We all, you all need to elevate this. You know that this is going to be a reveal thing. Don't put on a fucking coat. Don't throw on a, a over, like don't throw on an over shirt. Don't throw anything like don't do a, do a, like, just something simple that you're going to throw off and reveal a look underneath. Like that is not to me, that is not a reveal. That is not a reveal. That is you taking off a garment. So here's my thoughts on on that thing. No queen ever wants their first look to be the best look. Fair. Like when you're going to reveal other things, they should get better and better, not Uh worse. Yeah. Like, so she came out in the jacket, and I was like, oh, look at that coat. Like, that's yeah. fun. And the fact and that it comes off from the back, that was kind of fun. It's a little unexpected. Mm-hmm. That was it. But that was it, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. Like the o- But it was a coat, and that was my biggest thing. And the only thing that it had going for it was that it came off from the back. That was the only sort of twist, right. but it was a coat. And then she put had this other thing, and she had a little skirt on, and like it looked like a feathery kind of thing, like whatever. And then she took that off, and you just had this 
I don't even know what to call it. Because it didn't do anything. Yeah, it was like a faux stripper slash hooker. Yeah. Sexy something or other. It, 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 was, it, it, was, it was garbage. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, this is garbage. So, yeah. But, but that... but. That being what it is, like, like, but, and then that's sort of my, that's been a thing for most of the other queens. Like I said, like, don't expect, I had, if I, I, I had my bottom three and I wrote it down and I wrote down Morphine, Tsunami, and Amanda. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. But that, with that being said. All right. Uh, next up in this section, Nerve. Who are we giving Nerve to? Oh, okay. Save it. <laughs> Spicy take. Go for it. For those that don't know, as a sidebar, David and I, like, we have a doc. I usually, like, put it together and film my name first, and then David does it. And I don't see it really almost until we go live. So I don't quite know what, what's coming. That's why I right. that way. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love that you don't necessarily read the doc until <laughs> you're reading it while we're doing the show. Thank you for that. That fills my spirit. Um... <laughs> um i put down bring back my immunity um i think it's a lot of nerve for the show to bring back immunity okay but what are we doing with it like what what like is is it because if you remember and this is going back almost a decade i think if not more so because i think the last time we had immunity was season five that is what we were told in the narrative by morphe or by yeah q sorry yeah if it was if it was season five which was again 11 seasons ago um if i'm remembering correctly immunity was it was only on the if i'm not mistaken it was only on the next challenge well, if I'm remembering, if I'm remembering correctly. Right. But Rue gave the impression that you can use it throughout the season. That's what I mean. I don't know what they're, what this is all about. Right. Rue gave the impression that it was like you get it and then you can use it like if you fell in the bottom, which fair. Okay, cool. I, I might like that. A fun little twist to where right. if you are struggling with something – you can give yourself immunity if you fall into the bottom. You don't have to use it until you fall into the bottom. <laughs> but like in the if I'm again if I'm remembering correctly from seasons past, it was just on to the next challenge, which is very similar to other reality shows. You got immunity for the next challenge. You didn't win or lose. You you didn't have to worry about falling in the bottom and eventually going home. Like that was the whole point of it. Right. Um, and if that's the case, if it's the old way, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I, I kind of say I, I gave bring back my immunity, but I'm being a little, I just wanted to pun um, for bring back my girls, but I don't know if I'd necessarily want the old immunity back, but I want more information about what the immunity means for this one. If it is as they're saying, and it is a a token that you can hold on to until you fall into the bottom, it has a potential to be big game changing. Right. Well, so. and that's uh, one of the things I was just thinking about is that uh, I wonder how far the immunity lasts. Yeah. Because if I remember correctly in the past, any type of like save doesn't get you into the finale. Right. So that's the other thing. Um I I took it as it's good from now until Rue says it's not good anymore. Which means uh good luck with that. <laughs> because yeah. If the if production wants you gone, production wants you gone, and immunity is not going to save your ass, like they'll change right. if they need to. So that's that's kind of where I feel about that. But you're you're it's relevant, yeah. If it's I honestly took it, it's going to last into the season. I think it will last you all the way up to like close to the finale. Yeah. Um, looking looking or, at the doc. Or, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Well, looking at the RuPaul's the Drag Race um, fandom, it does say immunity from a future challenge. So I think they're taking it to mean you can use it whenever. Well, but here's the thing, because some weren't the queens discussing this, I think, in was it on Untucked, about the very issue of when they would use it. Mm-hmm. Like when when what are the what are the challenges they're concerned about? And I thought it was interesting that Q was like, I'm worried about dance. Like I'm not a big like choreography person, which became very evident in the lip sync for your uh life. No, not lip sync for your lip sync for the win. Yeah. Um yeah, she she doesn't have good body control. So, um, that I was like, okay, and you're right. So the fact that it's for the for a future challenge, I feel like, what are, what's the rules? Like, is Rue gonna tell you before, like before you go out there, you have to make the decision to use the immunity, right? As when, opposed when... to waiting until you find out you're on the bottom. Right. That's a good point. Like, can you use it? Like, do you have to use it at the at the start of the challenge? Mm-hmm. Like, this challenge is, I'm, I'm looking at season five. I just randomly jumped onto season five. It says, you know, the main challenge was make a dress that brings out Holland at realness, you know, and glamour. So it's, you know, the build a you know, dress challenge. Um, so it's like, okay, cool. So if I don't sew... Ru, like here's the main challenge. Rugos, um, who won this time? Um, Sa- Safira, right. you have immunity. Would you like to use it for this challenge? If that's the case, so you have to think about it mm-hmm. and use it strategically before, because it could be fun. Oh gosh, I'm, I, ooh, you're giving me thoughts. Because like, say you you use it for this. Um, the design challenge as a perfect as an example, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you use it, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flop, and you're terrible, and then the judges love it, and you win. Like, does that mean, like, it's kind of a you, 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 you fucked yourself over, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Like right. that, that's that's that could be good television producers. No, I, I, well, that's just it. That's why I think you bring up a good point. There's a lot to be known yet about what. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm I'm gonna give the 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 show nerve overall for bringing back immunity. We'll see how it works. Okay. Gary, how about you? Uh, speaking of uh, Safira, girl, uh. that talent <laughs> performance, that bitch knew what she was doing. So I'm gonna use one of my very good skills and sing opera. I'm going to look fucking gorgeous doing it she's regal and then she has a screed with words on it interpreting what she's singing and the gag if people don't know italian is okay so is the screed really describing what she's singing or is she singing the real thing and this is like a spoof parody like over here is what you think she's singing but it's not really what she's singing and then on top of it, she does this controlled. Oh, and that's that's the 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 thing of the season, baby. If you thought breastplates were back, in addition to breastplates, it's the controlled split to the floor, which takes a lot of muscle control. And that has happened a couple times already in the first episode. I was like, oh great, so those are the things this season's going to be known for, like breastplates, and which I thought was hysterical that Trixie blamed Jimbo for that. Yeah, it was like you're to blame, and I was like, oh, that was funny. Um, but in addition to that, the controlled like drop to the floor in a split, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, okay, like snap to your mama. Like I would, I would have given you ducats. Like I would have, I would have paid over doll hairs for that performance because that was that was something else. I yeah. really enjoyed that. So I thought that was a lot of her. She she knew what she was doing. I'm also very proud of her. I don't know her. I've never seen her before, but the fact that there's a Philly girl, I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> We've had Pittsburgh, now we have Philly. There you go. So, yeah. All right, you ready to move on to the next? Yes, let's song? do it. Mm-hmm. Alright, 
So this is snaps and eye rolls. These are our hits and misses from the episode, a.k.a. the highs and the lows of what stood out to us in this particular um, episode that we feel, you know, needs to be recognized um, compared to what we were discussing earlier. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Yeah. So I kind of am going to be on the Q train, like I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, And I call it Q's dedication. So she indicated in this episode that um, I believe she's a Kansas City queen. There we go. Had to look at that again. Um, You know, she's I I think she's from a smaller town and all that stuff and how, you know, um, she had the worries about coming out and everything, blah, blah, blah. And then we go into, she's dedicated a lot of time and energy. She makes everything that she put on. Like, her her reveal yourself outfit was amazing. Mm. All of the detail that probably went into that, all the time and energy that she probably took into that blood, sweat, tears, um, hot, you know, gun um, burns and, you know, needle pricks and what have you that probably went into making that outfit um it it was amazing i love that i wish you had chosen a different color than black considering the runway but um just lights and what have you black is not a really a color for this runway this but just in general but you did a good thing by adding like all the the i'm assuming beading or glitter or whatever and so it added that shimmer that helped but i love the outfit um um and i love what i what i see is your dedication to the craft. Mm. Um, And that's why I'm giving you my snaps for this episode. Um, From your entrance to the ending, while you didn't perform the greatest, um, I do appreciate your dedication. So props to your mama. I would would agree with that. I think she's very consistent in her, like, eye for detail and execution. I agree with you on the black color. As you were saying that, I was like, well, you kind of might know that as a queen if you've watched the show, but you're not really sure until you get there. Yeah. The only thing I could think of that she could have done differently was like use a dark color as the baseline of the fabric. Uh Like a really dark, like aubergine purple or something to like help make it pop a little. Like, Uh and then all the beading and everything on it might have like given it a nice like shift difference or something i don't know it's hard to yeah. say like to me yeah. that's like one of those things like your first go round, and then if you come back for some version of an all-stars like you would you would figure that out you'd be like okay like i need to yeah. think about like lighting and stuff like that but uh-huh. and and better. and i also thought her she provided a wonderful dynamic i just realized i forgot um with her um her talent performance which was the the not really puppet but i guess kind of a puppet hand puppet because it was her her hands were the were yes. the the feet yes. of this dancer and i mean her face was there i just and there, there, there was a fun like obviously comedy element there but i did i did enjoy that i thought that was cute it was de- definitively different like, yes when i saw it was q's puppet show and i was like oh boy i'm like this is gonna be very intriguing and then right away i was like oh Mm-hmm. So, and what I and after the first few seconds, when I realized that her hands were the feet, the ballet feet, then I was busy like looking at everything else because uh-huh. I was like, okay, how does this outfit work? I'm like in the arms with the little hands. I'm like, they must be on some type of spring. Like there was this whole like mechanism thing she had going on, so that it kind of all moved and it wasn't very like static. Yeah, um, and I very much appreciated that. So yeah, like she she did really really well with that presentation i don't know how much production enhanced the lighting situation because watching it it looked like there was just a black void Mm -hmm. and just her and i was yeah okay like there is a thing for optical illusion i'm just not sure how authentic the illusion is Mm -hmm. like i don't know if there was any like you know playing around with lighting and stuff like that to enhance it for her because they may have well, more than like if I if I'm looking if I was if I'm remembering what I'm remembering correctly, the little outf- I think the outfit is on like here. So like you say you took a t-shirt and like threw it on your arms. You had sleeves where your hands would go, which was where the dance the feet would go, and then she had something on the arms to like keep them kind of moving because it was a right. broad. If you looked at it, it was a broader chested like right. person dancer. Um. 
So she was probably doing, she was le leaned forward, head showing this like down. Hi everybody, I'm trying to show this. And then that's how she did the performance. Right. Was kind of like leaned like forward and doing it. And the only way that could really, really, really work is they were doing, they had to, like you said, they had to have done something behind and around her which maybe, I don't know if she constructed, if she fucking constructed that that stage mm -hmm. that she used, like, just fucking give her the crown now. Well, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I think she constructed the crown. I think she made, like, the getup. Mm -hmm. I just don't know about the blackness and the mid part, mm -hmm. like, around her. Because it seemed like there was no shadow of any kind of yeah. her body behind like yeah the actual you're supposed to be paying attention to and it's yeah. not a criticism it's just a the, and and normally it's an even like thing so for, on the stage you normally would wear like black like they have stage hands that if you're doing things they have, ask them to wear black because usually if you're in the dark or when the lights are out kind of thing so she probably has something black on potentially but like you the element the amount of like darkness right there was great for what she was doing. Right. So, and you had to have had, I think there was a, I think there was some kind of spotlighting on it. I'm pretty sure there was. Um, so it just, there's, there's a lot of elements that had to go into play and I, I'm pretty sure lighting this, they probably helped with lighting in some ways. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, still loved it. Loved yeah. it all. Well, that's fair. Go Q. Gary. Um, so I want to give snaps for Dawn's package. Mm. Dawn is the only queen out of the whole bunch of the seven so far that I've heard of before. Okay. And that's because she is affiliated somehow, and I don't know how. She's connected with other New York queens, and I want to say I saw her on either a Monet or a Bob video a couple of years ago, I want to say. Mm. Um, so... Because I remember the name, and then I kind of remember her, and she's just this little thing. And I was like, hmm. I was like, uh, I feel that you've been cultured and crafted by those that have come before you in your area. And, th and to me, there's nothing wrong with that. Why would you not, like, you know, do some reconnaissance? <laughs> like, yeah. Research some things and talk to former, you know, contestants and talk to them, you know, and see what they can, you know, are willing to tell you about. And Because I think that she really... I, I haven't seen anything where I'm like, what the hell? Like, mm. I feel like she's she's another one that has, like, a consistent, concise, like, kind of look and concept that she's bringing forward. Um, and uh, I have a funny feeling, I don't know, that I think a lot of people are going to compare her to Willow Pill. Mm -hmm. She's tiny, and she kind of relishes in being a freak. Like, yeah. in being different or weird or odd or whatever you want to call it. So... I'll be curious to see how that plays out in time. I think her bigger challenge, or I predict the judges will eventually ask her to do a beauty look that isn't unique, odd, slash different, whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I was really uh, kind of very intrigued. Like, um, And she seems very like nonplussed by anything that anybody has to say. Yeah. So, like, I watched the EW, like, introduction of the Queen's thing or whatever, and I thought that was very interesting because apparently she's the biggest shit talker of the whole cast. <laughs> and they're like, and there was this discussion about how, like, she just says things that she doesn't mean them to be mean, and most of the people know that, but if they don't know her right away, they, they do think that she's, like, shit talking. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, she'll be, I think she'll be one time. All right, moving on. Eye rolls. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. David, what do you give an eye roll for? Oh, I appreciate your laugh so much. Um, okay. Here we go. I am giving eye rolls to Raider Queen. Um, queen, quote, a question mark, is what I put down. Raider Queen, question mark. And there's a reason for that. Um what why <laughs> i don't want to say it, but that's sort of how i feel about it it felt it felt weird sorry i have gotten something in my eye and it's killing me anyway um 
Whew. Anywho, oh, I have to go grab something, but it'll, it'll take a minute. But um, it's just been weird. I got, I it, it it didn't add anything to me to the show, other than causing some sort of drama ish that could potentially happen if they let the queens know how the other queens rated them. Like that would be kind of interesting if that's sort of the take. Um, we don't know who was in the bottom because the whole they like that was my biggest issue. Like we're gonna rate all all the other girls. You you rate the other girls and notice they couldn't rate themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, which I thought was silly. Because that's sort of an element. I mean, you could potentially self-deprecate if you wanted to. You can make yourself feel bad anyway. But they only gave us a top two because there, no one was going home. Mm-hmm. So what was the point? Like, we weren't going to get a bottom two. So why did we do this? Also, to add on to it, is this just for this episode, these two premiere episodes, or is this going to happen for the rest of the show? Because if that's the case, then good luck, producers, um, on what you may be planning to do. Or, great job, producers. You found a way to sneak some shit in so that you can make it all work for yourself. Because... Again, if no one's seeing anything and they're not telling the queens anything and you don't know who's in the bottom, you only know who's in the top, then um, it kind of is going to become this big old thing where the producers can be like, we can throw whoever we want in the bottom because the queens don't know who. The only, the only queen who knows who they vote, the only, each queen only knows who they, who they voted for. Right. So it has this potential element that I'm not a big fan of. It leaves a really bitter taste in my mouth if it's just going to be all producer like focused and driven. Um, but for, and I also want to know if this is going to last for now, like just these two episodes, which makes sense because it's the talent show and you get to see their talent number in the runway and that's it. Um, which also, do they see the runways? Or did they just see the finished reveal? Like, it was the reveal, pro- like, this was the reveal one. So did they see the full runway? Or did they just see what they looked like at the end? I don't know. It just, it just bothered me. I'm grabbing a napkin. Right. That's fair. No, I, th- I think there's a lot of, I think you bring up a lot of valid points. And I had not considered that production still gets to do shenanigans. Because, you know, just like the infamous chocolate bar. Um. <laughs> so, uh, for me, my miss, my eye roll, uh, Rue's late ADR. So, for those of you that don't know, ADR stands for Automated Dialogue Replacement. So, if you ever hear a voice speaking that doesn't match the sound that it had a moment ago, that's ADR, where you record something later in a different space, and they never – and I don't know why Hollywood hasn't figured out how to fix this yet – how to make it sound like it's supposed to sound and not obviously be them in a recording booth or wherever they are, in their closet, on their phone, or something like that. Um, so that's the first part. I have actually two eye rolls. That, so that happened when Rue revealed the Raida Queen. Uh. Earlier in the episode, when she was in the room looking like the little choo-choo that couldn't train for that thing. Um, uh, girl, I don't know what was up. I don't that. know what was going on with that. Who, like, who, who, how, who, how high were you? Who, who came up with that? And it didn't even make sense because it didn't have anything to do with the ep- Anyway, sorry. So, uh, <laughs> or did we do it just because we wanted to do the train joke? Like, is that was that the whole point? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Like, how high were you? Um, like, girl, did you have an edible for breakfast? Is that what happened that day? So, <laughs> you were you were like, Raven, paint me up as a as a male train conductor. Anyway, I'm totally off topic. So there was a weird, but it was weird. It was like she was talking, and then all of a sudden it kind of cut 
I think to the queen's reaction or something, and she and you mm-hmm. can tell it was a voiceover that she like that she they spliced in her saying uh-huh. something at another time because she didn't say it in the room. And I'm mm. like, uh, okay, this kind of sounds like a post production issue. I don't know what that was. So there was that, and then the other part was um the amount of self editing. Now this self editing is going on by the queen, like uh, a mandatory meeting, girl. You were getting you were getting the worst edit at the moment because at least three times I think in the episode you were like, oh, don't use that or like let's redo that or and, like don't leave it in. <laughs> and I was like, and I love how like it's like, girl, that's not how that works. No, like, if they're that's... gonna get you. They're gonna get you. Like, oh hell to the yes. Like we are going to use that. I love that moment where she was like, she came up on stage for her reveal yourself, and like her wig came off. Right, and then she's she like, "Can we do it?" So quickly, the wig just kind of like whoop, whoop. <laughs> and I thought I'm... it was a shtick, like for the first moment where she was like, "All right, let me redo that or something." And I was like, "What?" Like, I and... was like, "I was like, what is she doing?" And then when she really redid it, I was like, "Oh, like she seriously thought she could tell production how to do that." <laughs> and I was like, "Um, no, no, that, that's not what's happening." And what's to me is. You could have just ran with it, because I mean, you're gonna, it, you're, you're literally gonna take it off anyway. Right. Like no, okay. Let's be honest, y'all. Like no one was gonna be, would be shocked if no one was shocked that the wig was gonna come off. You right. literally had a zipper down the middle, of, down your fucking face. Right, 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 right. Like, like we, we know you're gonna do something with taking this thing off because you're we're, clearly you're not gonna show like this isn't the face you're gonna have in this reveal challenge like like you are not this is not the face you are going to be wearing we hope not god we hope i mean hmm. not that the one that got revealed was so <laughs> wait wrong one shit the fact that the fact that um that the Jimbo and Trixie in the pit stop have a discussion about the California raisins. Like, I mean, I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Nobody made a Thanos joke, but they could have. I mean, like, my goodness. It was it was not good. Oh. No, I agree with you. She could if she'd rolled with it, if she if she'd been very much quicker on her feet, she could have just like acted like nothing happened. Keep walking down the runway and then act like she's gonna take the hair off, and that's when she realizes the hair's already gone. Yeah. And pantomime, like, some, you know, like, oh, my God, what happened to my hair? You know, and then do the face reveal. Not that it would have t- saved the face reveal. No. But anyway. No. God, that outfit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We all Talk have choices. Time. Some of us make the wrong ones. Just saying. Uh-huh. But she's not the only one that did self-editing. I think Morphe does it. Uh, uh-huh. I think Q does it. And I was like, oh, these girls, like, what, what came to mind about this is, and I was like, here's, here's the difference, and I know this is going to be probably a little spicy, pageantry prepares you. Uh-huh. Sasha Colby, I don't think, ever really got clocked for, like, saying stuff on a hot mic kind of moment, like, or doing this kind of stuff. Because I yeah. think she knew the whole time and was well prepared by many people who came before her. Like, the cameras are just act like they're constantly recording everything. Right. And, like, you don't, you have no control over anything that happens, which I think is why it was a little hard to for them to work on Sasha at a certain viewpoint because she wasn't giving him stuff. Yeah. And these new queens are like, oh, I think, like, you know, they're used to, like, their own YouTube channels or TikToks or Instagrams or whatever. I don't know. And they're like, you know, okay, well, we'll just cut that, or you can sh- change that, or whatever. And then they leave it in, and I'm like, oh, babies, yeah, they're gonna do you dirty. They're gonna do you dirty every time. They're gonna do you dirty. Let me tell you, um, it it was so funny. Um, just the 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 because it was in confessional, even like, don't do that. Like, no, like, don't say like. Like, I shouldn't That's say that. That's what I mean. I was going to yeah. say about, about earlier when you were talking about morphine and how she, like, changed her tune about mm-hmm. how she felt. That's yeah. a self-edit where she yeah. was like, no, actually, you know what? Never mind. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. I was like, y'all don't understand how this works. Like, the, they control the camera. They control the the recording 
of what they caught, and they can show it any way that they want. That's what you signed off on. Yeah. So you can say things any way that you want, but you know the only way you get away with that apparently is to like give a swear filled screed or you know (laughs) like show your ass and even then like they might blur it out i mean you know it's just it's kind of difficult to gauge that so anyways i I, so i'm giving eye rolls to the new queens for their self-editing like it's it's better to not say it than to like try to try to give them a second take because they're they're gonna leave it in i'm just saying just say nothing all right so as we get close to getting ready to wrap up with our closing here um just, I know this is the very first episode. Is there any predictions you have, Damon, in terms of these seven, like, in Ooh. terms of Oh, gosh. Like, oh. I will say this. Uh-huh. I think Safira Crystal has the potential to go very far. Uh-huh. Um, Mirage, I think, is a dark horse. Mm. Because she's talented. She's a little goofy. Yeah. Um... I don't think the other queens are taking her seriously. Yeah. I think Dawn has the potential to go pretty far. And I feel like Q has some potential, but I've already seen some things that need to be worked on, so I'm not sure. Right. Uh, um. Yeah, so it's rather interesting, and I hope, again, we're not being led astray, but I feel like Safira is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, she's multi-talented in, very di- in, in a lot of different areas. Um, so she's one I would look out for, for sure. I feel like I agree with you. I think she might have the potential to go very far. Um, I'm looking down at what I see here and I'm looking at the people. Um, I'm a fan of Q. I will own that, but I agree with you. Um, my, my concern with Q is does her dedication, is her dedication going to translate into the boot camp of drag race? Because, yes, you can make some really beautiful, wonderful looks, but that's you on your time, taking hours, et cetera, doing it. Are, is that going to translate over to you have to make this outfit in a day or right. whatever? Or, or are you going to get sleepless nights in a hotel room because you're willing to sacrifice your life that way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um a bad prediction and I'm just going to put it now. I don't think Zunami morphine are Amanda are going to go far. Mm. Um, I was genuinely, like I told you, like those were the three I could have seen in the bottom. Um, if they had had a bottom like three or two this episode. Um, yeah, I, I think other than that, I mean, Mirage and Dawn, Dawn is okay. I f- worry that Dawn's going to um, they're, they're, like you said, they're probably going to want something different from her and she's not going to be able to deliver. And that'll be where her flaw will be. But who knows? Right. And we're just talking about the first group of seven. We haven't seen the second group yet. so No. Probably Only not. on other episodes. And it was funny um I had I had every intention of watching um um Bussy Queens like kind of cr- looking at everything because that's usually my main and I know it sounds bad. That's usually my main go to for like quote unquote quick ish mm-hmm. um looking at things and hearing about the queens because she tends to grab a lot of from all the other, you know, areas. Mm-hmm. Um I started watching it. I want to say this week. I know it's been out for a little while. I, I think I started watching it this week, last week, and I just never went, got back around to it. So I heard, I got up to half the queen, like halfway through, and I know I saw Dawn. I don't think I got to like past that. I saw Amanda and I saw Dawn because they they're earlier alphabetically. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of queens, like in this episode, I didn't even know they were like I had not recalled fully that they were on the show. Like I've seen the promos from 
um, RuPaul's Drag Race, like their Twitter, but I hadn't seen much else beyond that. Right. Fair. Yeah. All so, right. We'll see where, where those go. But with that, a um, few things that folks might want to know. There is a lovely blog website you can find information on called CubsOutLoud.com. That's where uh, all of our episode items get posted as well as um, where you can keep up with what's happening with us. Uh, you can send us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You can also, if you'd like to, leave us a voicemail. You can call in uh, and contact us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, basically, on social media, anywhere that uh, there's a platform, you can type in Cubs Out Loud and see if we have a profile there. Um, we do have a social chat on the platform called Telegram. If you go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R, you can join our little chat group over there where we kind of t- um, talk. I was about to say talk shit, but that's not fair. We talk about <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race, the show, and uh, what we think of what's going on with uh, that. If you want to um, know what's happening with us in terms of our live uh, stuff, see, well, DR right now is still continuing where we're pre-recording. Um, but if you want to check out the main show and see when we're going to be posting, that's tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen col. And if you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. You know you want merch, baby. Everybody does it. Uh, there's great things that are out there. David is showing. We have a beautiful um, drag queen pride t-shirt that says consent is my foreplay, part of that group line of shirts that we have. We also have mugs and other items with our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on it. Um, I happen to be wearing our mainstay uh, shows t- design that we came up with this past year, the made to be uh, with a series of descriptors that's you know fun and suggestive um, as well. In addition to uh, the Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud store, where you can find all those great things, you could become a patron and go to Patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and for a dollar or more a month be supportive of us. We greatly appreciate it. We like to say it keeps the lights on uh, around here, pays for some things. So we would greatly appreciate that. And if you just want to give us some coin, we would happily take a tip. And uh, you can go to PayPal.me slash Cubs Out Loud to make a one-time donation. In addition to that, if you want to find our podcast, you can pretty much find it where anywhere you listen to podcasts. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is a separate um, RSS feed, so you can listen to just these episodes if you're interested in it. We're also obviously on YouTube where you can watch the video. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they do so? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Cub 79 That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most bear related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. You can find me as pup umbra seven nine on um, ooh, pup umbra seven nine on Blue Sky, and now unofficially, well officially, you can find me as dma gamer seven nine on TikTok. Oh, okay. I took the plunge and joined TikTok. Don't ask me. I've got like five followers. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I may be doing, I haven't decided yet. I'm going to see if I can, but I may also be doing a more NS, well, not NSFW, but somewhere I can follow more NSFW kind of things and doing a separate one for that one. This one, DMA Gamer 79, is more for the safe for work ish kind of things. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much online anywhere as Gabriel73, but in terms of drag, um, I created a Twitter handle, which is Gabriel 73 drag um, at the end of it, just so that I could kind of keep all of the stuff in a bubble over there. Uh, <laughs> as I was referencing in the pre-show, I tend to, like, block any, like, references to the queens' names or the queens themselves just so that it doesn't spoil things. Because I don't watch the show live. I tend to watch it, like, the next day. So I like to have things be fresh and new as far as that goes. So with that, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, follow us, all those things, we would love it. And uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks with the next episode. Ooh. So until then, see you later. Bye. Bye.